Hey guys, how's it going? This is Bharat here. Uh, welcome back to yet another video. I'm extremely thoroughly in, uh, interested in this topic for this video. It's really important topic and people have been asking me this question in comment section in my Instagram pings and also in my LinkedIn pings. So what I'm trying to understand or answer in this video is the three different technologies that we are having right now, three different uh, frameworks that we're having right now. The first framework is the Flutter UI Toolkit. The second framework is the React.js. The third is the Python Kiwi library. So three different useful libraries slash frameworks and what is the best out of them? Like how do you decide what is the best out of them? So to make sure that I make a good decision, to make sure that I'm actually giving the winner for these three different technologies, I'm going to be sub classifying this video into three sections. The first section is going to be what is the best uh, framework for mobile? I want to develop a mobile application. What is the best framework for that? Second section is going to be what is the best framework for developing for both mobile as well as web. And the third section obviously is going to be about mobile and desktop. Like these three different sections are going to be uh, useful for a lot of different people. A lot of different use cases are going to be covered under these different buckets. So I'm going to be making sure that I explain what is it, how is it useful and also give you guys the winners as part of the end of this video. So that's going to be the flow for this video. Hopefully I made it clear. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe as well as like this video. Even we have already begin because it's going to be an interesting video again. So let's get this video started. A lot of content coming up. Let's go. All right, so when I want to talk about these three different technologies with respect to these different frameworks, uh, the first choice was uh, a lot of people who have been watching this channel are very big ardent fans of Flutter. So whenever I say that something is not going to work with Flutter or this isn't really scalable, uh, you guys come back with a lot of not so good reasons to not like that video. So what I'm trying to say with this video is that I'm going to be highlighting what are the different use cases that are actually going to work with Flutter and what are the different use cases that works better with other technologies rather than saying that it is not going to do well with Flutter. So that's something that I'm trying to uh, reduce as part of this video. So what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to mobile, mobile is a very important, important technology that you have to know all the time. When it comes to mobile, I am actually very, 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 very impressed with what Flutter has done in the past one, one and a half years. So Flutter as a programming toolkit has actually changed the way people look at writing a code for mobile applications. So the whole idea behind writing one code uh, for uh, both iOS as well as Android is extremely good and it's extremely useful as well. So it's important that you understand that Flutter as a toolkit is very useful when you're writing faster, when you want to write faster prototyped applications. So I'm very, I'm a big fan of that. However, when you come back to understanding what exactly does mobile need, there is this concept of one code for one app, which is not really applicable. Uh, it's not going to be applicable in any sense. Uh, even though I'm a very big garden fan, even though I actually talk to you a lot about writing native code, instead of working around with cross-platform tools, I would highly, highly, highly appreciate that that is to, to make you guys understand that there is nothing called one code for one app. Meaning that you have something in your mobile uh, iOS that's running in one, one way and that is the same thing that is going to run in Android as well. So if you want to make changes for Android or you want to make changes for iOS, you still have to go touch the native code base and make minor tweaks to make it really cool for uh, that respect to uh, OS. So what I'm trying to say is that there is no concept of one code, one, one code, one app and uh, I'm, I'm also not a big fan of that as well. So again, that is what Flutter is going to be giving you guys. It's going to be a very, very huge uh, crowd puller when it comes to writing code for mobile. I'm, I'm a big fan of that as, as well. And again, with respect to the same topic of is a mobile application, what is the best tool for mobile application? My second is always going to be React Native. Uh, hands down the easiest framework that I've tried uh, apart from Flutter. Uh, that is, it's going to be huge. It's, it's got a huge upside potential mainly because it is pulling a lot of web developers into their uh, into this, its own sense. The main reason being that it's very similar to how do you how you write React.js, React.js library. So it's got a very similar structure for all that for mobile as well. So who, whoever wants to write for web can just do that 
and uh, they're going to be easily transitioning into writing code for mobile as well it doesn't require any kind of additional knowledge or new programming language like flutter requires dart doesn't require anything of that sort if you are very good with respect to web development people are transitioning like that for uh, react native and there's also a bigger business perspective for that as well i'll talk about talk about that in the next section but again react native is a huge uh, developer favorite when it comes to companies uh, but again with respect to flutter it's it's more of an indie kind of a developer favorite meaning independent developers find it easy to use they don't have to worry about huge teams managing the code flow and all of that so again those are my two important uh, section technologies that are going to be applicable for this section this section is going to be about mobile application so mobile application i i i'm thoroughly impressed with flutter and second place will be react native Python Kiwi is good, but again, a lot of times I've talked about the disadvantage of Python Kiwi when it comes to mobile, meaning that there isn't much that you can use or you can derive out of Python Kiwi. Uh, it's it's kind of difficult to work with Python Kiwi and expect a very aesthetically pleasing UI application. Not going to be possible. So I'm not going to even rate that for mobile. So those are my two important technologies I'm going to be rating for uh, uh, mobile application. All right, so this is the, the second section is going to be about web and mobile. So why am I talking about web and mobile at the same time? So if you see, there is not going to be, there is going to be very little applications that are only mobile only, meaning that there isn't uh, any company, let's say that I'm working in a company A, that wants to build application, they also want some kind of a web interaction for the same application. So it could be, say for example, let's take a very simple example. I want to write, uh, I want to build a social networking application like Facebook, Instagram. That is not going to be just mobile only uh, for these two different social media networks because what's the use? You are losing out on a 30% of the population that mostly uses browsers. So 30% of the population still depends on using browser and you're going to be using those customers. So people do not just develop a mobile application, they also develop the same kind of application for web as well. So in that space, in that perspective, I, I don't, I'm, I'm really going to be putting React Native in the number one position for a lot of different reasons. First reason being React Native has got a very similar structure to React.js. So again, it's derived from the React.js library so it has got a lot of easy to do stuff with respect to React Native. And when you are writing for web, all you have to do is just take the UI component out alone, just modify that, abstract that out, and replace that with the React JS or website specific elements. And once you do that, you've got a very simple, minimal work done on the already existing code base, and you have deployed it for both flood, uh, your, your mobile as well as for web. So that's going to be very, very easy for me to do when I'm thinking in terms of a company perspective. Again, the next question that you're going to ask is that why are you not rating Flutter for web in this section? I'm going to be very honest with you. Flutter for web is not ready for web at all. It's still got a lot of years of time to work on it. It's got a very terrible performance when it comes to web. So Flutter for mobile, if you take the Flutter for mobile code and try to deploy it for web, you will find that it's really, really not interesting to look at. It's, it still requires a lot of UI changes to make it work for web and also it's got a lot of different spacing issues, crawling issues that is going to make your website aesthetically unpleasing. So, uh, so what you will end up doing is you will be writing code for mobile and you will have a separate code base and write the same code, same UI again for web to make it interesting. So I find that very very bad in terms of writing for code for two different technologies and making it look the same and dealing with a lot of in, in, inconsist, inconsistencies when it comes to web. So I'm not going to be rating Flutter at that section at all. So the first uh, position for me when it comes to writing for web and mobile at the same time is going to be uh, React.js for sure, hands down. Flutter might take the second position if I'm considering that I want to do the same for two code bases for different technologies. And Python Kiwi is, there is no way that Python Kiwi is working right now for web, so I'm not even going to rate that. So pretty much that's it for this section. Uh, hands down, the winner for web and mobile at the same time is going to be React.js, React Native combination. All right guys, so towards this last section, which is about desktop and your mobile. So again, desktop and mobile is, uh, is an interesting combination because again, there are, there are few applications that support your mobile to desktop kind of transmission 
and it's re really effective when you're trying to do some kind of applications through that so what usually company do, do is that when you want to they want to write something for desktop they spend hearts and hearts of uh, amount of effort putting into uh, working with the desktops os for example i have windows i have a mac and i have ubuntu and i want to deploy a simple application for these different oss uh, they end up building a lot of amount of time they build a lot of amount of effort into putting uh, into building for that specific os so what these cross platform uh, tools like your flutter and your python kiwi tools that they actually reduce the process by more than half half the amount of time so they actually use the same ui the elements that are available and they redeploy it for the specific os when it comes to desktop and i find it really interesting that both flutter as well as python kiwi is able to do it very easily so for the, for this section again it's a really interesting combination to look at uh, desktop and mobile i would be rating about the same for both uh, flutter as well as python kiwi for one simple reason uh, flutter is going to be extremely useful for mobile hands down no doubt about that and for desktop it's still in beta meaning that it's not yet released in terms of a uh, wider audience production you never know what is going to happen in production however on the same hand the python kiwi has actually been working very well for desktop applications i mean in terms of well i mean it's working extremely well for desktop applications uh, they have a lot of different shell components that are available with python so you can make use of that access the uh, oss specific shell components you can even write a little bit of low low level language you can write low level code access that with the desktop application it's it's an interesting combination when when it comes to python kiwi so if you ask me what is it going to be what is the winner for this section is it python kiwi or is it flutter i'm going to be giving a slight edge to python kiwi uh, even though it is not going to give you an aesthetically pleasing application you can still work around that and still develop application for desktop and mobile at the same time easily flutter is also going to be taking the same position maybe a little bit of a two or three points lesser because it's not yet available for the production you never know what is going to be happening when it does launch for production so pretty much the three sections are these what what is the best for mobile hands down the flutter ui toolkit what is the best for mobile and web if you want to develop something like that it's going to be react js react compound uh, react native uh, combination finally for desktop like i wanted to develop an application for desktop as well as mobile i would be going a uh, little bit of edge with python kiwi library just because it's extremely useful for desktop so those are my three winners for this section and that's the video i wanted to convey hopefully i'm not talking a lot of different stuff for you guys to not understand uh, hopefully also cover the doubts that you guys have had and pretty much that's it for this video so i'll meet you guys in the next video something really useful and interesting uh, until then peace out have a super awesome day